Now, we're going to continue our theme of being happy for others, or not, as the case may be. In You magazine at the weekend, journalist Polly Williams wrote that power couples such as the Obamas and Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore, who flaunt their relationships in the public eye, only serve to make the rest of us feel inadequate about our own love lives. She goes on to say that the news of Madonna's divorce and Tiger Woods' infidelity were good for us all to witness because, and I quote, to stay sane and married, we have to rejo rejoice in the flawed reality. She even admits uh, to be looking forward to the day when Ashton and Demi tweet that they didn't have sex last month. <laughs> <laughs> so do you find comfort in other people's relationship misery, Denise? Um, not, 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 not per, per se. I mean, you, but the only time that I find pleasure in it is when couples gloat about their happiness and, and, and sort of criticise other people's relationships, criticise other people's marriages, because each marriage is, is special to that person. doesn't matter how you get through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's been a couple of times in the press lately, there's been a, a couple of people that um, I just did that na 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 <laughs> because they have gloated about their perfect, their perfect life on so many occasions mm -hmm. and criticised others who don't have such a perfect life. So yes, I do, I, I do quite get off on their misery. Which is, is a... <laughs> I think it's difficult looking at other people's relationships and, and taking it on board. I mean, I had a friend who, who was going through a very bad time and I used to sit with her and actually uh, I took on board everything she said and... Um, Oh, how can I put this? She emptied herself and filled me. And I went back thinking, oh, isn't it great? You know, I've not got these problems. And oh, she's. So it made me feel slightly better and thinking, oh, how. Old... And then I got back and thought, actually, I think I've got those problems. And it kind of reflected on me. Then I started to look at myself and my relationships. So I, I kind of thought, that it, it kind of worked for me, but mm. then reversed itself. But how about the fact that you're single now? If you listen to other friends who are having relationship problems, how does that make you feel? Like, is, is there a little part of you that's kind of glad? That they're breaking up? That they're no, having a rough no, time? no, that would be horrible to say that, Andrea. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I wouldn't say that, but uh, um, is, as Den and I know, you know, lots of women of this age are on their own now. So, and they, and... You have to learn to live with that, and so you cannot look at a relationship and go, no, oh, because you, you would come over as really bitter and sad and twisted, wouldn't you, if you thought of that? Well, I, I think misery likes company. Do you? Yeah. Oh, you're all very profound today, aren't I you, know. what you're saying? Yeah, I'm I not think, sure what that means. Well, I think if someone's got the ump, they're not happy unless you've got the ump as well. <laughs> that was very yeah. nicely put. Do yes. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, and I remember... Uh, and um, we've got, you know, we've all got f friends that are couples and stuff like that. And I think, you know, we're, we're talking about when kids are involved. Obviously, it puts a totally different slant on it. And I always think it's really sad when a couple that uh, have, you know, kids break up. That, I don't take any comfort in that at all. That's absolutely mm. heartbreaking. But if you've got, like, a couple that have, have been together a little while and they're your mates and they've got relationship problems and they... Often people come and talk to me and Paul because, you know, we, we're quite open people, quite honest, and they share their problems with us and then we all have a chat about, well, what do, we, what do you think he should do? What do you think she mm. should do? And we sit there, like, as if it's all perfect with us and say, well, perhaps if she was a little less like this and he was a bit more like that. Yeah. And then we look at each other and go... You're a bit like that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. You do it yeah. to yourself. So but also, what it does, though, I but what yeah. it does, though, when you listen to other people, which, which I did and have done and do now, I think, actually, I wasn't such a failure. Do you know what I mean? Because you do feel a failure when you lose your mind. And I, I thought, no, I wasn't such a failure. Maybe just things do go wrong. Mm, mm. And if, I, if that's happening to them and they can come out of it, maybe it's OK for it to go mm. wrong. But actually, being a failure it can actually be quite a positive thing. Because I know when I was trying to be Mrs Stepford Wife the whole time and, you know, everything's all lovely and mm. look at my baked things. Um, <laughs> big things. No, baked things. You know, <laughs> look at me, I've made things and I wear an apron, you know. That sort of I was very Brie, you know, yeah. Desperate Housewife type thing. Um, well, if you don't mind me saying, he's better off without you if you were like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he is. He actually is, because it, it, I thought that you had to, had to do the whole, to the outside world, everything's absolutely lovely. How are things? Fine! Oh, everything's yeah. absolutely fine! Yeah. I thought that's how you had to be, because you don't, you don't talk about things. You brush them under the carpet. Oh. And then, when everything spectacularly exploded and it all fell apart, now the dust settled and, you know, we're very happy in our own different relationships. I, and, and for a while, I felt like a massive failure, not only to myself, to my family, but I thought other people would look at me that way. Uh, now I think completely the opposite. I think now I'm just like a normal 
person. It's not a bad thing and to now fail. You, you, you can because of that. You can give advice to friends. It's life yeah. experiences that, that. Well, do you know? I wouldn't ever give a, advice necessarily, but I would listen and be far more empathetic. Right. I mean, I can just understand why you know people are just so envious because they look at Tim and I and see the perfect relationship. Do you know what I mean? It makes them feel a little bit, little bit insecure. I can't help that. I, I was going to say the same. Yeah. I go, wow, yeah. look yeah. at those well, that's two. Life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you fantastically well. You make each well, other laugh. I have to say, we've been together for 20, 21 years, do you know what I mean? And it's funny because I used to have this girlfriend when, we, when I was little, I don't know, about sort of 11 or 12, and she used to love to say to me, God, I'd hate to live in your house because your mum and dad are always rowing, you know. She did witness a fight, but my mother had a toasting fork, my dad had not a tea towel. But, um, <laughs> but basically she used to say, God, that must be awful, my mum and dad, you know, my mum and dad never argue. Guess who's divorced? Do you know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. you just shouldn't comment on other people's relationship yeah, unless true. you're asked to. That's Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Really. It's been a bumper pack.